and welcome to Everlance, the mileage and expense tracking app. During this brief video tutorial, I will demonstrate how to perform the basic functions of the app. So let's get started. This is the home page. On the home page, we can see a summary of the data that's currently being stored in our Everlance account. At the top of the screen, we can see our unclassified mileage. In the middle, we can see our classified mileage. And if we were to scroll down to the bottom, we can see a summary of our bank transactions. Now, if you are brand new to Everlance, then these summaries will be zero. You will have zero unclassified mileage, zero classified mileage, and zero for your bank transactions. But don't worry, these numbers will change as we use the app. To review the trips that are currently being stored in your Everlance account, we'll want to navigate to the trips page. To navigate to the trips page, please tap the car icon that says trips under it, located at the very bottom of your screen. By tapping it, the screen will change this is the trips page. At the top of the trips page, we can see two tabs. One tab says unclassified and will only display unclassified mileage, and the other tab, for all, will display all of our trips, both unclassified and classified. To navigate to the all tab, simply tap it and the screen will change. On this screen, we can scroll down and review all of our trips that are currently being stored in our Everlance account. If you get to the bottom of the screen, it might take a moment for additional trips to load. To navigate back to the unclassified tab, simply tap unclassified. There are three ways to use Everlance to record your mileage. The most popular method is with the auto detection feature. The auto detection feature uses the GPS system on your phone to automatically sense your location. It's designed to automatically sense your starts and your stops. To manage this feature, Tap the little round icon in the top left-hand corner of your screen. It looks like a little face. By tapping that feature, the screen will change and we'll get a menu list. From the menu list, tap tracker settings and the screen will change again. At the top of this next screen, you see auto detection with a toggle switch. Tap the toggle switch to turn the feature on or off. We can tap it to disable it and we can tap it again to turn it back on. Underneath the auto detection toggle switch, we see auto classify. Now on my account, auto classify is currently disabled. Auto classify is designed to automatically classify all of your mileage to one category. To enable this feature, tap auto classify and a list of options will appear. You can scroll down and select an option from this list. If I select Everlance, now I can see the auto classify is enabled. It will automatically classify every trip I take to Everlance. To turn this feature off, I can tap auto classify and the list will reappear. Tap off to disable it. The second most popular method for recording trips is with the start tracker button. This button is designed to allow the user to manually enable the GPS tracker. To enable the GPS tracker, tap the plus button at the very bottom of the screen and a list of options will appear. On the left, there's a button that says start tracker. By tapping the start tracker button, we're allowing Everlance to manually track our location. When we tap start tracker, the screen will change and we'll, it'll automatically go back to the trips page and we can see we have a trip in progress. As we drive, the mileage amount indicated in the left-hand corner of the trip card will increase. When the trip is over, tap the red stop button to end the trip. It's important to note here that if a trip is manually started, it must also be manually stopped or it will continue to track indefinitely. Users can also manually enter their trips. To manually enter a trip, you'll need all the details associated with each individual trip. To enter this information into your Everlance account, tap the plus button at the bottom of your screen and the screen will change. This time, tap the car icon that says trip underneath it and the screen will change again. On this next screen, you'll be able to enter in each detail associated with that trip. You'll need the from address where you began. Tap from address to enter your beginning location. 
You can either enter in the street address, use current location, or select a favorite place. And we'll talk more about that later. Tap to address to enter your final destination. And you can see the distance between those two locations is calculated for you in the top of the screen. To the right of that, you see an, a camera icon. Here, you can take a picture, such as a, a picture of your odometer, if that is necessary. You can also edit the date associated with your trip by tapping the calendar icon. And you can classify your trip from this screen as well by tapping purpose, selecting the appropriate option. You can also edit the vehicle that is associated with that trip by tapping the car icon. You can enter any necessary notes. And once your information is entered, tap create to save the, to save the trip. Once a trip has been recorded with a GPS tracker, either automatically or with a manual start tracker button, it will appear on the unclassified tab of the trips page. Once the trip appears on the unclassified tab, we can classify it by swiping the screen with our finger. Swipe right for work or swipe left for personal. We can also see a map of each trip. Let's try it. If I swipe right with my finger, the trip will disappear. However, it's not deleted. It's on the all page. If I swipe left or far left, then I have further options and I can further classify my trip. If I want to review classified trips, I can tap the all tab and the screen will change. Here I can review trips that have been classified and uncategorized trips as well. Next, let's generate an export. To generate a report, tap the round icon in the top left-hand corner of your screen that looks like a face, and a menu option will appear. From the menu option, tap Generate Data Export. At the top of this next screen, you'll see a date range. You can tap that arrow to select a customized date range. Tap Select Dates. Now, if you're on the basic version, the next step is to tap the email report button at the bottom of the screen. If, however, you're a premium subscriber, then you can further filter and sort your data before you generate the report. To do this, tap advanced reports. From this screen, you can further filter your data. Tap choose export type if you only wish to receive one type of report instead of two. Tap Choose Format if you wish to generate a PDF or Excel report. Tap Choose Purpose if you wish to filter by a specific purpose. And tap Choose Business Line if you wish to generate a report based on a specific business line. Next, tap Save in the top right-hand corner. Next, tap Email Report. Now you know how to perform the basic functions of the app. So you're all set, and thank you for watching.